the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. For example, if people say that you know Almighty God, He's a thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You might be knowing the person, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person who won the title, Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the world, the strongest man in the universe. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. And there is nothing like unto Him. Whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger, or whether it be King Kong, or whether it be Dara Singh. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. This Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, is the touchstone of theology. And I would request the brothers and sisters out here that the God which you're worshipping put him to the test of Surah Ikhlas. And if he passes the test, then the God which you're worshipping is the true God. If he does not, then he's not the true God. Why do we Muslims prefer calling Allah with the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God? Because a person can play mischief with the English word God. For example, if we add S to God, so it becomes gods, that is the plural of God. There is nothing like the plural of Allah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he's Allah, the one and only. If we add D-E-S-S to God, so it becomes goddess, that is a female God. There is nothing like female Allah or male Allah in Islam. Allah has got no gender. If we add mother to God, so it becomes God mother. There is nothing like Allah mother or Allah Ammi in Islam. If we add father to God, so it becomes God father. There is nothing like Allah father or Allah Abba in Islam. If we prefix tin to God, so it becomes tin God, that is a fake God. There is nothing like tin Allah or fake Allah in Islam. That's the reason we Muslims prefer calling Allah with the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God. Many people say that if Almighty God can do anything and everything, why can't He become a human being? If Almighty God becomes a human being, then He ceases to be God. Because the qualities of Almighty God and human beings are opposite. Human beings, we are mortal. Almighty God is immortal. You cannot have a mortal and immortal person at the same time. Human beings, we've got an end. Almighty God, he's got no end. You cannot have a person with an end and no end at the same time. Human beings, we've got a beginning. Almighty God, he's got no beginning. You cannot have a person with no beginning and beginning at the same time. It's meaningless. It's like you telling me, I saw a tall short man. Either you can see a tall man or a short man or a medium man. It's like you telling me, I saw a fat thin man. Either you can see a fat man or a thin man. You cannot see a fat thin man. We human beings, we require to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 14, wa la yut'am. And he feeds, but he is not fed. We human beings, we require to sleep, we require to rest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 255, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyub, la ta'khudhu sinatu wa la naum, lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. That there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No slumber can seize him, nor does he require to sleep. All that is in the heavens and the earth belongs to him. And why should we worship a human being just like you and I? If in the same argument, if Almighty God can do anything and everything, if we go a step further, Almighty God, He can even tell a lie, He can even make a mistake, He can even do injustice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 40, Inna Allah la yadlim dharra. Allah does not commit injustice even in the least bit. If in the same argument that Almighty God can do anything and everything, if he goes a step further than Almighty God, he can even tell a lie, he can even make a mistake, he can even forget. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 52. Almighty God, He never forgets. Lord, He never forgets. So nowhere in the glorious Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah can do anything and everything. What does He say? Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. For verily, Allah had power over everything. And it is mentioned several places in the glorious Quran. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 106. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 109. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 284. In Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 29. In Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 77. And in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 1. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. For verily, Allah had power over all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Buruj, chapter number 85, verse number 16, Fa'alul lima yurid. Allah is a doer of what He intends. Whatever Allah intends, He can do. But He will never intend to do ungodly things like making a mistake, like telling a lie, like forgetting, like becoming a human being. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. For verily Allah had power over all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 18. Summum bukmun amyun fahum la yarji'oon. The deaf, the dumb, the blind, they will never return to the straight path. And it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 13, verse number 13. Seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. It is mentioned in Rigved, book number 10, hymn number 71, mantra number 4. Some see the word, yet they see it not. Others hear the word, yet they hear it not. So all these scriptures, they're explicitly mentioning that you have to worship only one God. Yet there are some people who behave like deaf, dumb and blind and do not follow the message. And most of the religions, they directly or indirectly believe in the philosophy of anthropomorphism, except for Islam. They say that, you know, Almighty God, He's so pure, they give a very good logic for it. They say that, you know, Almighty God, He's so pure, He's so holy, He does not know the shortcomings of human being. So He has to become a human being in order to know what's good and bad for the human being. On the face of it, it's a very good logic. But for example, if I create a DVD player, if I manufacture a DVD player, I don't have to become a DVD player to know what's good and bad for the DVD player. What do I do? I write an instructional manual. If you want to play the DVD, put the disc in and press the play button. If you want to do fast forward, press the FF button. Don't drop it from a height, it will get damaged. Don't immerse it in water, it will get spoiled. I write an instructional manual. I do not have to become a DVD player to know what's good and bad for the DVD player. Similarly, Almighty God need not become a human being to know what's good and bad for the human being. What does He do? He reveals an instructional manual and He chooses a man among men and communicates with him at a higher level through the form of a revelation. Therefore, the last and final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us humanity, it is the glorious Quran. The do's and don'ts are mentioned here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He need not become a human being to know what's good and bad for the human being. He reveals an instructional manual and He chooses a man among men and communicates with him at a higher level through the form of revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, Qulidullah Rahman, husna. Say, call him by Allah or call him by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belong the most beautiful names. And besides it being mentioned in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 8, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 180, and in Surah Hashir, chapter number 59, verse number 24, that Lahul asba'ul husna that to Allah belong the most beautiful names. And there are certain terms and criteria 
as far as the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are concerned, it should be a unique name. For example, all of us know that the first human being who set foot on the moon, he was Neil Armstrong. If I want to give a unique attribute to him, if I say that Neil Armstrong is an American, it is not unique. There are many Americans. If I say that Neil Armstrong is an astronaut, who is an astronaut, it is not unique. There are many other astronauts. So if I want to give a unique attribute, a unique name to Neil Armstrong, I have to say that Neil Armstrong is the first human being who set foot on the moon. Who is the first human being who set foot on the moon? There is one and only answer, and that is Neil Armstrong. Similarly, when you give the names and attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should be unique. If I say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the creator of buildings, who is the creator of buildings? It is not unique. There are many other names you can give of human beings. If I want to give a unique name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the creator, sustainer and cherisher of the universe. Who is the creator, sustainer and cherisher of the universe? There is one and only answer and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people say that why could he not have many gods? One god for the sun, one god for the moon, one god for the stars, each handling his own little kingdom. If there would have been more than one god, surely there would have been confusion. It is more logical to have one supreme power handling everything rather than many gods handling that little kingdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 22. If there were gods besides Allah, surely there would have been confusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 91. That no son did Allah beget, nor does he have any partners. Behold, each partner would have taken what he associated. Behold, Allah is free from what they associate to him. If there were more than one God, surely there would have been confusion. Therefore, we see this in the mythology of many of the religions. One God defeating another God. One God helping another God to defeat a third God. How can you believe in such a God who can be killed? How can you believe in such a God who can be defeated? Therefore, the best and the most authentic is one supreme power over everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 79, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ then woe to them who write the book with their own hands. Then they say this from Allah to traffic with it a miserable price. So woe to them for what their hands write and woe to them for what they earn. And by the passage of time, almost all the scriptures, except for the glorious Quran, they have been changed. But yet, in the remnants of all the scriptures of the major world religions, it is mentioned that you have to worship only one God who has got no images and you have to worship Him alone. Islam merely does not believe in monotheism. Islam believes in Tawheed. Tawheed comes from the root word Wahada, which means to unify, which means to consolidate, which means unification. And there are three categories of Tawheed. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, and Tawheed al-Ibadah. The first is Tawheed al rububiyyah maintaining the unity of Lordship. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only God who is worthy of worship. Everything is dependent on Him, but He is independent of everything. The second category of Tawheed is Tawheed al asmai wa Sifat. This has further been divided into five subheadings. The first is that the names and attributes to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should be as per Allah and His Messenger have given. You cannot give your own names. 
For example, you cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghazab. Though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry, you cannot give your own attribute to him. The second is that the names and attributes you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the description should be as per Allah and the Messenger have given. You cannot give your own description. However it is, you have to take it. The third is that the qualities of human being, you cannot give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say that Almighty God, He makes a mistake. You cannot say Almighty God, He forgets. Na'uzu billah. The fourth is that you cannot give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qualities to a human being. You cannot say, I saw an immortal person. The fifth is that when you give the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to any human being, you have to add Abd before it. For example, Abdullah. And Abd can only be added before the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say Abdul Rasul. The third category of Tawheed is Tawheed al Ibadah, maintaining the unity of Allah's worship. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of worship. You have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without associating partners with Him. And if you have the first two categories of Tawheed, Tawheed al Rububiyyah and Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat, but if you do not have Tawheed al Ibadah, then you are committing shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the biggest sin in Islam is shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 48, Inna allaha la yaghfiru an yushraka bih, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik liman yasha, wa man yushrik billah, faqad iftara ithman azimah. Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him, but he forgives anything else to whom he pleases to set up partners with him, is to devise a sin most heinous indeed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 116. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrak bih wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik liman yasha wa man yushrik billah faqad dhalla dhalalan ba'idah Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him but he forgives anything else to whom he pleases for whosoever sets up partners with him has strayed far far away from the right. Therefore, the best message to give to a non-Muslim is Allah na'bud illallah that we worship none but one Almighty God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 72. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ They blaspheme, they do kufr, who say Allah is Christ the son of Mary. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ and said Christ, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ O children of Israel, أُعْبُدُ اللَّهِ Obey Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشِكْ بِاللَّهِ For whosoever shall associate partners with Allah. فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ So Allah will forbid Jannah for him. Allah will forbid the garden for him. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ نَعْرِ And the fire is his dwelling place. وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And for the wrongdoers, there is no one to help. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشِكْ بِاللَّهِ For whosoever shall associate partners with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ So Allah will forbid the garden for him. وَمَأْوَاهُ نَعْرِ And the fire is his dwelling place. وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And for the wrongdoers, there is no one to help. That's the reason I started my talk with the quotation from the glorious Quran, from Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. Say, O people of the book, Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, that we worship none but one Almighty God. That we associate the partners with Him. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. It then they turn back. Fakul shadu, say ye bear witness, be anna muslimoon, that we are Muslims, bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason the best message to give to a non-Muslim is, Allah na'bud illallah, that we worship none but one almighty God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Yusuf, chapter number 12, verse number 106, 
وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ And most of them believe not in Allah except while associating partners with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 27, that if the trees on the earth were converted into pens backed with seven oceans, yet the praise of Allah, it would not get exhausted. For Allah is exalted in might, full of wisdom. I would like to end my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran from Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 73. Ya ayyuhan nas, dhuribat masalun fastami'ula. Inna alladheena tad'oona min dunillah, lan yakluku udhubab, wala wujtama'ula. Ye men, there is a parable set forth for you. Listen to it. Those whom you call upon besides Allah, they cannot even create a fly. Even if they got together. وَإِنْ يَسْلُبُ الْذُبَابُ شَيْءٍ لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُ مِنْ And if the fly took away something from them, they cannot even release from it. ضَعُفَ الطَّالِبُ وَالْمَطْلُوبُ Feeble are those who petition, and feeble are those whom they petition. وَأَخْرُوا دَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ